Um, so what do you all love about being documentarians? I'll start. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I just love um, the fact that um, we can, I think, inspire people. Um, I think that's the, the most, um, you know, that would be the best thing if other people see our films and then start thinking, well, what do I want to be or what do I want to do with my life or what do I care about? And if we just have ingrained them with some thoughts about, you know, going out there and, and making a difference or making something meaningful or talking about very important issues. I mean, all these films, I'm in awe when I listen to the stories, you know, and all the thought and the passion that goes into it. And if people can then maybe think about their own lives and start, you know, it doesn't have to be films, but like anything that is like meaningful and has a, a reason why I'm here, then that that's, I think, a great thing. Um, I, I find I love um, living in the wild, being trying to understand how the natural world of which we are all a part works, and then having the privilege of trying to tell stories that somehow connect other people to the wild and to the natural world, and to which I personally, especially in such a tra currently traumatized world, we desperately need. Well, when I was watching everyone's films here, I was thinking how documentary filmmaking is so much about creating empathy and it's kind of we're em empathy machines trying to <laughs> right, I mean the film as a device of of creating an empathy machine and in an age of of a there's a beautiful essay by Walter Benjamin that says about the storyteller where like how when you lose the possibility of, of, when you lose the ability of storytelling, which happens with uh, when, when the newspaper started coming out, he noticed that people were losing the ability to tell stories because it was just this flood of information and what was a story today became old the next day and old the next day. And I think documentaries bring us back to that place of like turning, things that happen into experience because otherwise they just lose themselves in the rapidity of the events and you don't have time to digest them and to feel empathy for them. <coughs> I think surviving, this is what I can tell from my, from my experiences. Um, um, in every single experience in documenting in Syria, it's like finding people together, surviving and being uh, an eyewitness in just uh, bringing that as a, a documenting for the history that to not let the people who have a power to write it. As a victims, you need to survive and to survive you need to write. And to write, this is the art where the first human start when painting as finding the, the meaning for his meaning for meaning for his life, he's paint on, on, on the caves. We, we do the same things. Uh, well, so much of what you do is in real time and you never know what's going to happen next and sometimes it's often dangerous situations that you find yourselves in. Uh, what is the, the key to adapting to an unpredictable shifting story? Well, look, I mean, um, I think experience is a, is a big part of why I continue to go into hostile environments. I've been shooting films now since 1998, and I've shot more than 50 as a cinematographer. So I've been in a lot of very, pre, you know, how do you say, like, well, dangerous situations. You know, every, every film has a different challenge. I remember in 2000, I crossed the Himalayas with a group of Tibetan refugees and was evading, you know, Chinese military checkpoints at night with night vision goggles. So that was like 20 years ago. So I have been like through a lot of different stages of um, of danger. You grow with it. You can never stop feeling afraid because if you're not afraid, then you will probably die because you may make mistakes. So you have to be ready. But you know, uh, it's also the the team is very important. I work with people I've worked with for 15 years. We we have been through most uh, you know situations together so we make choices together and and that's how I think we can grow but in the end I always think of one thing my heroes are the ones who are in this situation every day of their life and I remember for example when I was shooting a film on Bolivian silver mines 
my heroes was a 12 year old boy and a 14 year his 14 year old brother they worked like a mile underground with dynamite sticks and explosions and very dangerous situations and i'm just here for two months covering their lives they do this every day and that gives me the strength and the courage to to be there because i'm like i live a super luxurious like life compared to theirs and i just will use my time to document this so the, the world can can understand what is going on there and that means taking some risks but i'm totally fine with that i think um in the natural world the key to um to uh dealing with unexpected events is really actually um get trying to get ahead of the unexpected events so um understanding listening when whenever we first go into the field to start a film it it takes us probably five or six months to actually let we have to, we have to listen to the, the wild. We have to listen to what's going on. And then if we're in tune enough, we'll actually start to put things together before they happen or um, possibly get, you know, get ahead of things or understand things that we never linked before. So really it's a lot about listening and observing. In, in our film, the, the, the film was at first just about the impeachment. So it was supposed to finish with the trial, which lasts like six months. And and that was already huge and thousands of hours just of the trial. And, and then once we started to get a grip of that, the scandals continued. And, and I, we went back to film and every time I went back, it was like, people started to think uh, we were crazy. We're like, we're not gonna finish this film. But it, w but it was clear that the process had not finished, that her impeachment was not enough, that Lula had to be imprisoned and, and Bolsonaro had to be elected. Um, and if I had finished the film during the impeachment, as, as some voices of wisdom said I should, it would be a dated film. And, uh, and so the, op being open to, to the unexpected and being stubborn with your guts, I think, was kind of my way of dealing with the unexpected. It's hard to answer this question, actually. I mean, it, um, I, I been in, in, in my case in, 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 in Syria, I didn't did anything outside of the Syrian situations, um, which is it's a stand on searching about the meaning of why I love this country, why I hate this country, because so, so, so many reasons to make me hate it and don't want to back to that country and don't, don't want to have any connection to that million of reasons. But there is this is reason that make me searching about Dr. Amani, the white helmets, or I did the film before this also about, about two uh, children refugees who's without their um, uh, families, who their families killed and they take the 15 years old, take the, the decision to go through all this is um, um, trip to uh, to Europe, give them mobile, teach them how they film, then they film their lives. Um, that this is reason that those people who are fighting for surviving it make make me s think there is something I have to love that country for it and find an identity for a lost country that have no identity, being destroyed by dictatorship and being uh, destroyed by by different foreign countries that never look to the people, have, have a meaning and stories, and they have to, as me and my team, have to bring these stories up and bring the empathy and sympathy uh, and meaning for this picture. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your favorite documentaries? <coughs> oh, like Edge of Democracy and <laughs> The Cave. Everyone <laughs> here on <stage. laughs> Look, I, I, I love um, a big variety of documentaries. Every time I watch a documentary, I'm like, that one is amazing. You know, there is, um, there is uh, I wouldn't say there is one of the favorites, but there was a key documentary where I was so happy when it came out, uh, which uh, is called Virunga. And that was one that um, had just come out when, uh, from Orlando von Einsiedel, who had just uh, completed it in 2014, which was the year I started working on the Ivory Game. And it was the first one that I saw where I saw the things that I was trying to do already kind of accomplished in a film that are that I could refer to as like 
the films I want to make, um, well, this one was about you know the extinction of elephants, but look at Virunga and you will understand what I mean. So that was a very inspirational one for me um, and, and great when it came out. But there are so many great ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I find it almost an impossible question, but for me, one of the... I have to ask myself about um, the, the impact of um, documentary films. And when I think about, it's not really a film, but um, the series Blue Planet 2, Amazing. where which totally in has turned around people's notion of plastic and the conversation around plastic. I find that I have to, I sort of wrap both the film and its effect um, together, and then I'm in complete awe. I think the, the ones that were inspirations for, for this film, one is Battle of Chile, which is a film that documented the coup in Chile backed by the United States that killed Salvador Allende, the president, and um, implanted a dictatorship for many years. And it, what was amazed me about that film is that he managed to film that as it was happening in the streets, in the Congress, and in the presidential palace, and in the streets in several levels, like how the right w was uh, reacting to having a progressive president, how the unions were resisting. So when I saw it, I was like, wow, I think now I understand what is happening in Brazil in terms of this, I this sensation that there's a coup going on and you don't really know how. And, and I was like, wow, there's actually something going on in Brazil after I saw that film. It became very clear and it became also a guideline for me of where I wanted to be. I didn't just want to make a film about one politician. I wanted to show society in, in all its levels. Yeah. Um, every day I find a new film like to, to <laughs> spare me, really. I mean, um, actually the documentaries, the whole doc any documentaries made it's something important. It's just open your eyes like about how much you have things you have to do and how much you have like a uh, mission to pressure your politicians yeah. like to do and make the change because you're, you're this is what 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 do documentary do. But I but I've been inspired uh, for the cave from um, Shuha and uh, which is about the Holocaust as as well, the act of killing and the look of silence. Um, I love those three films. I feel them like all the time sticking in my mind that they have a very powerful concept uh, about the meaning of the death, meaning of surviving and meaning to be criminal. Documentaries are eligible for Best Picture at the Oscars, but none have ever been nominated before. Do you guys see that changing anytime soon? I just wish we had more categories in general where documentaries would qualify. People, it's such a shame. There's um, all these amazing films that are out there <coughs> contending with us, and we only had this one single slot that we could go in. Like, why isn't there a best cinematography or best editing or best director also in in uh, in documentary? It would uh, give us a bit of ease to like have more options and. I mean, to be honest, to compete in the best picture is going to be extremely difficult at all times because the pr biggest problem is the majority of people still don't watch documentaries, you know? So that's uh, that was one thing that got me thinking when I started making films with a message with impact that are about very sad topics, extinction and things disappearing. How can I make films that are approachable to all the other 95% of the people who just watch narratives and fiction? Uh, how do we get to them? Because if we don't get to them, how can we ever get a movement of change and inspire, you know, everybody versus just the, the ones who are dog addicts or tree huggers or environmental lovers, the people who will watch it anyway. But like, what about all the rest? And the same goes for the Oscars. I don't think docs get enough recognition in general. But my, I think my, uh, my answer is slightly tangential to yours. But um, the, I th the this the importance of reaching a broader audience, and I think is an absolutely crucial question that we should all be asking ourselves because it is so easy to to only talk to to those who are already listening, um, and we it was one of the reasons that with the Elephant Queen we wanted to make um, a film that would reach 
eight to 80 year olds of people who maybe don't even know they're interested in the natural world at all by making a very accessible story. Um, that doesn't really answer your question, but I, I think Richard did it so well that I don't have anything to add. For me as well, it was very important for this film to be first to be with Netflix, to be in 190 countries. And the idea of that is so revolutionary that people around the globe with the film about democracy, when the whole globe has democracy in crisis, could see it um, was extremely valuable. And seeing that resonance happening through the Twitter, there was in Brazil precisely there were people. Well, the film was being tweeted for one minute, every, uh, one tweet per minute for the first few months. So, so it happened there. But of course, it's difficult for it to happen in the same way in different countries. And I hope that can happen somehow. <laughs> I, I I think will uh, and somehow will change in the future. I don't think it will be like uh, the commentary will people not because the reality now it's everyone like having mobile to comment it to put it on on their social media and they start to be like you know it's this is the whole Syrian revolution being documented well and being broadcasted through the social media and a lot of people see this is the horrific footage and everything and that make people more e easy like to to get to to be ready like to watch it but it's need a time of course to to do that um uh, but I think I think I think the most most important things we in in our, in, our, in our side as a as a documentarians is is we are going to where to the place nobody wanna go to there and we finding something nobody can find it and we bring it like a game for 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 the people and then we need to share them and um, and when we gain like three four people sitting in <laughs> in our our screen room and watching that it's it's mean so much for us.